I've created a simple resource tool for this session today. And to get to it, you will want to go to the URL that you see right here that I have made a little bit shorter for you and easier to use. It's tiny.cc slash look feel. Okay, I'm going to start my screen share in just a second. What I'm going to share with you today, um, I was asked to kind of give an overview of how I improve the look and feel of my online um, content with a few particular tools. Um, by the way, what did Jamie Hannon's just kind of discuss with you folks? Her, her website. Her website. Okay, so it was a WordPress kind of convo? Uh, okay. She covered quite a few different tools. Okay, so if anything I'm saying is redundant, let me know, because I want to make the best use of our time. Um, and I am someone who really believes that images are a really important part of everyone's life. Um, so before I get into kind of the tool part and all that kind of, kind of thing, I really like everyone to start thinking about ourselves as humans and the role that images play in our everyday, like informal lives, how important they are, how, you know, when, when you're in a room, you like to fill it with some kind of imagery. Um, it, it makes you feel more connected to something. It might just be the color. It might be the image being represented. But I think as educators, that's a really critical thing for us to be aware of when we think about engaging our students and really the process of cognition over all because how you feel about things really impact the way you relate to things so that relatedness is important um, and also that whole kind of um, effective domain of learning can be triggered when you start to use images too so what I'm talking about here today is really more about um, the user experience and when I think about designing a course I try to really get myself to think about it more as an experience for students than content I'm putting together. That may seem like a minor shift, but for me, it really makes a difference when I think about what I'm creating as an experience. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and share a course that I teach at a community college, Mount San Jacinto College, which is located down in San Jacinto in Menifee, California. I live up near Sacramento, but I teach online for them. So the course I'm going to show you first is a fully online course. And um, if we have time, I'm just going to take you also into one of the courses that I teach here at CI for faculty, uh, which Michelle, I, Michelle Dean, I think you're the only one there who has been through it already. But oh, me too. OK, so this is my class, and it's the history of still photography. So um, my discipline, I know it's a visual discipline, so I, it's, you know, kind of a nice alignment for me. Um, obviously, images play a really big part in the content for my students, but when you're in an LMS, when you're creating content in an LMS like Blackboard, which this is, images are something that you have to really think about, right? The environment is not innately visual. So one of the things that I really like to do in my classes um, is every time we switch to a new unit in a course, which is in my class and the way I've designed my courses that's every week, I change the banner at the top. And what that does is it's just a real simple visual uh, marker for students as they log into a course at any point what unit we're on right I mean students are all over the board you've got to remember that they're learning in multiple courses so when they come in I want them to know immediately where we are what they should be working on um, and so that banner is important for that reason but it's also important because I weave in images from content and also, it is a way for me to demonstrate my instructor presence that I've been there with, with just by changing that image. Um, so that's what you see up at the top here. Um, a great tool for creating banners is Canva. This one is actually not made in Canva um, because I made this one before I learned about Canva. But I'll show you one that I made in Canva um, in my other course. Over on the left side, I'm going to click on the About Michelle button, and that actually opens a new page. So this is a standalone web page that I've designed in a tool called popular.me. So again, 
going back to my class, click on about Michelle and new, see a new tab. So it's a, it's a new window. It opens in a new window or a new tab. And it's a simple page that I created uh, using popular.me, which is, um, it's called a micro publishing tool. And it allows for you to create simple web pages very, very quickly using templates. And they're really pretty nice looking. Um, one tip I would share, or I, maybe I should say advice, is that as easy as it is, sometimes it's not as easy as it looks. Um, so I just give you that, that heads up. Um, this is a page about me. So it tells a little bit about my educational experience, how I fell in love with art history. Um, just, you know, I try to personalize a little bit. So it's outside of me as, as instructor. At the bottom here, I have a link to, a, oh, it's actually an embedded video that plays right on the page there, which I don't think you'll be able to hear. Oh, maybe you will. I'm not going to play more of that, but um, again, I want them to know I love what I do, and I want them to know a little bit more about me as a human, so that's there. And down at the bottom here is a, is a quote by Dorothea Lang, one of the photographers we learn about in the class, and there's also a link to the syllabus. Now, the syllabus is linked in the course, but the reason I'm showing this to you is because this is kind of a really cool, simple way to create a page about yourself. It's standalone, and you can be linked into multiple places. Um, so this is, I think, something I may have linked to my blog as well. And so to be clear, so you're, you're in Blackboard, but then you link out of it for your bio stuff. Exactly. So when you are in Blackboard, and I'm not going to take time to explain how to do this because there's lots of people can explain how to do that, but these, these buttons here on the left side can be customized, right? You can customize the title of them, but you can also customize it to be a content item within Blackboard or an external link. So you can have it link out to any web page. Um, and then what I also recommend is that you adjust it to open in a new window. So those are the little tips behind the scenes of how that was set up there. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true for the syllabus link, which is, um, and I, I realize this might be kind of tiny on the screen, so I can actually zoom in a little bit. Uh, so the syllabus link here, if you click on it again, it's going to open a new window. And this is the syllabus for the course. And this is also made with popular. Um, I think that this change moving to this type of syllabus format has been a huge shift for me and it gets a lot more information out to students in a way that I think they enjoy reading. Um, I get lots of comments from my students about how awesome my syllabus is, which is kind of a weird thing to hear from students, right? Um, and so again, it's an image that we learned about in the class. So when they start the class, they see the image, they don't have that context. And then I get these really interesting comments from students later as we start learning about this photographer, Lewis Hine, you know, oh, I remember seeing that picture in the syllabus and I wanted to know what it was all about. So, you know, if you can think about making the images that you use in the look and feel kind of relevant to what the students will be learning about through the course, it plays um, kind of a tricky little, you know, learning game as well, which is kind of fun. So I'm just going to scroll down here. Again, uh, Popular allows you to easily embed videos. So I have a welcome video here that um, I have on my YouTube channel, and I just plugged it right in. Um, again, it's just me saying hi to my students. And it has um, a button here to my email, all that good stuff. Lots of information about getting started. Um, but this is what I wanted to show you down here. Okay, so learning units, um, my course is a full semester course chunked down into manageable content, which is a really important part of designing, designing an online course. And one of the things that I did pretty recently um, was I took one chunk of each of my units, which I refer to as the unit overview, the learning unit overview, and I started creating that content in an external tool called TAC, T-A-C-K-K. I used to have all this stuff in Blackboard in just plain text. Um, I didn't like the way it looked, but it was kind of what worked for me. So over the past semester, I started converting all of these units to TAC. And what it allows me to do now is actually just put a link here right in the syllabus 
to these learning unit overviews. Now they're also in Blackboard, but if you think about the syllabus as an opportunity for students to kind of preview what's ahead of them, it really plays a, an important role there. So I'm going to click on, um, let's see, this is the one we're on now, Unit 5. And it takes us out to TAC. So again, it's just an open website. Um, and this is something I pulled together literally in a couple of minutes. Except for the video, I had that created already. So all of my units start with a video um, introduction by me. And also, you'll notice this thumbnail, this kind of aqua thumbnail here. This is a thumbnail that I uploaded into YouTube that I created in Canva. So Canva is like a, it's a graphic design tool that allows you to create images online. And what I like about that thumbnail trick, and usually a lot of faculty understand this, if you've ever recorded like a webcam video of yourself, what happens when you embed it? What do you look like? Awesome. You're like, right? Because it freezes you at this, usually the worst time. So I upload a, a custom thumbnail. And so when you click on it, it still plays the announcement. Hey there, folks. But when it just is hanging there, it's not my face, like something like this. OK, so that's one of the overviews. Now, the other thing that's kind of cool about TAC is when you're creating web pages in TAC, if you tag them all with the exact same tag, for example, I have right here, I think I've got 14 or 15 overviews here, unit overviews. Each one of these is a different one. And I tagged each one with the keyword HOSP, which is the acronym for my class history of still photography. So then if I go over to this link, view all learning unit overviews, TAC automatically will allow you to access all the TACs created by anyone with a particular keyword or tag. And the way it works is you just go to tac.com slash board and then slash the keyword. So all of these are the tags that have been tagged with HOSP. So you can start thinking about this as kind of an interesting way for um, students to create content. You know, if you had a group of, let's say, 25 students and you said, okay, all of you are going to create whatever it is they're going to create using TAC, add a particular keyword, right, which will be part of your instructions, then they're all in one place and it makes it really easy to manage and share content. Any questions about that? Got it. I know it's, it's kind of a lot of you haven't used the tool. <laughs> um, but now I'm going to show you what one of those overviews looks like actually in the course. Because now, I remember, I took you through the, I took you into the overviews through my syllabus, right? So now I'm back in the course in Blackboard, and I'm going to click on Learning Units. And I'll go into the learning unit that we're in now, Unit 5. And this is what students see every time they open a unit. They see a unit overview link and content and activities. Inside the content activities is like everything they need to do for the week. It's all the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts. But if you click on unit overview, it shows the embedded tag, right? So here's, let me find it over here. Oh, maybe I don't have that one, the keyword on that one. Oh, here it is. It's this one. Okay. So there it is in TAC. Here it is in Blackboard. So the other cool thing that's kind of cool about TAC, the cool thing that's cool about TAC, that was redundant. Um, another thing I like about TAC is the fact that it has embed code. So you can take the content from your page and embed it into another site like Blackboard. So again, it's all here. The video, it's all here without the students having to go out of Blackboard. Hey there, folks. Okay. Questions? I would just recommend if something's catching your eye but you're feeling overwhelmed by all these new learning, that's totally where you should be. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's a lot. And and I'm keeping a list. I'm adding it to the agenda. I mean, we're, we, have, we will be providing another resource for you 
that will have everything on it. But just if you're like, wait, what was that one thing that the show was talking about, the tack? I mean, it's hard to make. And that's, that's another reason I wanted to record this in case there is something that you think, oh, I might, I want to see that again. So I'll get this, I'll get the recording out to you folks and you can loop back and look at it because I, it is really overwhelming. And I also want to say, you know, I've, I've been teaching online for 10 years and um, this image element has, has been kind of the more recent in, in introductions into my course. Um, I think it makes a big difference for the way students relate to it, but also technology has advanced significantly. And so it's really easy to create this very visual content when you're not using just an LMS. I mean, the LMSs are still very behind when it comes to kind of the drag and drop element for integrating images and videos. Um, I have a question. Yes. So, so I started playing with TAC about a year ago, and I gave up on it because I really didn't like it. I liked, I liked the visual aspect, but it was really, really, I found it very difficult to add images in, and I was trying to make a syllabus and stuff. Has it gotten a lot better? Or maybe I'm an idiot, which is possible. So very it, intuitive. that's interesting. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's changed. I don't think it's changed. Um, for me, I think. I don't find the adding of images or the adding of video difficult, but the layout has a right. lot of constraints. In other words, and that's why I don't, I don't personally use TAC for my syllabus because it's like, it's a single column. Right. And so you end up with this really long, 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 long column. And so that's one thing that I like about popular is because with the themes, you, there are multiple columns, but I think it's actually harder to work with images in popular because you'll drag an image in and it, will cons it won't let you make it bigger or smaller. It'll just plop it into one particular size frame. Right. Um, so it is a little bit well, tricky. You know, and I thought a lot about that because when I was thinking about sharing with you, first of all, I didn't know what kind of introductions to tools had been done at this point already. So, um, you know, with the, the concern about overwhelming you, but at the same time, I just think it's, it's really a fabulous experience to be able to peek inside other courses because I will tell you that, you know, I, I taught fully online for, I don't even know how many years before I ever had an opportunity to see what someone else was doing in another online class. And so it's, you know, it's not that I'm saying do it this way or, you know, you, you have to teach within your comfort zone, but I do think it's, it's, it is important to know that there are different ways to put together and create content. And I think that if, if you just take that away from this, then it's, then it's valuable. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is just take you over to the course in CI Learn. So this one's in CI Learn, and this is one of the courses that are part that is part of the online teaching preparation program. It's titled Design, Designing Engaging Online Activities, and at the top you see a banner that I created in Canva. So I uploaded, I created it in Canva, I downloaded it as an image, and then I uploaded it into CI Learn. Okay, so that just sits, this is only a two week course, so I actually don't change the banner in this one. I just leave it the same for those two weeks. And I'm gonna click over on learning modules. So these are the two modules that I have set up for the two week course. And um, again, I just have a banner that I created in Canva for both of those. So I wanted to show you how the banners can kind of function within the units as well. And let's see, the other thing I'll show you here is I'll click on syllabus. And you'll see that it's basically, so now you're seeing that I kind of use like different content, but the same time, type of flow uh, in the courses that I teach here. So again, it opened in a new window and this is also a syllabus that I created in Canva. What's also really great about Canva is um, when you create a page, you can duplicate it. So if you get a syllabus the way you like it, right, you can duplicate it, change the title, pull a new banner in. Of course, there's going to be some things that'll change, but a lot of things will stay the same also. So that's something that I, that I find really helpful as well. Um, you can really kind of make a good use of 
the time that you put into creating your content. Is that, is that popular as Canva? I'm sorry, did I say Canva? This is popular. <laughs> Someone's listening. <laughs> And then the About Michelle page, I think it's a different About Michelle page. This is my CI page, but same kind of concept. Um, just talks a little bit about what I do at CI. And that's about it.